Some positive news on the coronavirus front tonight. For the first time in 100 days, the U.S. is averaging fewer than 100,000 new COVID-19 cases per day. That's according to data from Johns Hopkins University. The last time this metric was below 100,000 was on Election Day last year. The U.S. has recorded more than 27 million cases since the pandemic began. The head of the CDC, Rochelle Walensky, says she doesn't believe all teachers need COVID-19 vaccines before returning to the classrooms, but those who are at high risk should be given the option for virtual activities. Take a listen. We have in the guidance clear language um, that specifies that um, that teachers that are at higher risk, teachers and students that are higher risk and their families um, should have options for virtual activities, virtual learning, virtual teaching. I also want to articulate that while it's not in our um, school guidance that it's a prerequisite for schools to open, our ACIP Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices guidance does put teachers um, in the 1B category for vaccination. That is vaccination um, of the same group as greater than 75 year olds. So I'm a strong advocate of, te of teachers receiving their vaccinations, um, but we don't believe it's a prerequisite for schools to reopen. And joining us now to talk about the latest on COVID is infectious disease expert and virologist Dr. Lane Rowling. Dr. Rowling, it's good to have you with us. A good evening, see you, Brittany. Good to see you too. Well, Dr. Rowland, let's talk about community spread of the virus in the black community. You believe it's getting worse. Why is that? Because I don't think there's been enough testing of what the virus, uh, you know, uh, present is in the black community. That's probably one of the biggest things that we've had over the last year is actually testing folks to see uh, the prevalence of the uh, SARS-CoV virus among the black population. So testing is still inadequate. And as long as uh, testing is inadequate, we're never going to have a true resp resp uh, representation of what the virus is in the population, especially among African Americans or people that are, uh, you know, uh, underserved or underserved privileged people. And that's very important to try to mitigate and contain the disease. I mean, that's just the facts. Uh, we still have to do more PCR testing to get a hold of the virus and the real presence of the disease in the population, especially with the new uh, variant mutants that are out there now, the uh, South African strain, the London strain, the California strain, the Brazil strain. So you can imagine if our testing was inadequate on the first shot, you can imagine what, the, what these new viruses are going to be in the black population. So we need to do more screening. So when we talk about the black community and COVID, those with sickle cell need to be extra cautious. We talked about this earlier. The CDC says one out of every 365 black or African-American births are affected by sickle cell. Should those who have have sickle cell get the vaccine? Oh, well, Brittany, what you just uh, said was a game changer for blacks in the world because, you know, that is very important. You're the first person to mention that because nobody else has mentioned that. We have to understand that when people start talking about vaccinations and we start talking about vaccinating black folks and you're trying to get black people or underrepresented African-Americans to be uh, vaccinated, you have to understand the first question you have to ask, do you have sickle cell? Or do you have sickle cell disease? Because among black folks, this is a very common genetic disease that we have. For you to even go in the military and uh, you have to uh, ask that question, do you have sickle cell? Tell people you have sickle cell because it's very important. So you can imagine black folks trying to get vaccinated and these folks have sickle cell disease, sickle cell trait. You're trying to get kids back into school. You have older folks that have the sickle cell trait and you give them a vaccination and it sets off with a sickle cell crisis. So this is why it's very important as we move forward in understanding vaccination, understanding how to mitigate, contain it, trying to come up with new vac vaccines, we have to make sure one of the first questions that folks need to ask, especially when it comes to the African-American community, do you have sickle cell trait? Do you have sickle cell disease? Anybody in your family has it? Have you been screened for? Because the vaccine can set off a sickle cell crisis, and that can be a terrible outcome for lots of black folks. And that's one of the basic things of making sure as a healthcare disparity that we're on top of this and really understand black health situations, i.e. diabetes, high blood pressure, kidney problems, asthma, obesity, and also realizing that we do have a genetic trait called sickle cell, and so we have to have a balance in that.
Mm, that's good stuff there. Well, the president also announced late last week that they're planning to make 200 million doses of the vaccines available no later than the end of July. Do you think there's no doubt this will help get those numbers down, despite some folks still saying they don't want to take it? Well, you know, that's a that's a big question. You can have 500 million doses. If the, the bottom line is that do people have confidence in the vaccine, the vaccine, the outcome of it? I mean, for, for, for example, you know, today you had an orthopedic surgeon out of Tennessee he had both vaccine. He died uh, from the, the vaccine. You've had people in California that have had both vaccines, the first dose and the second dose, and these folks turn up positive for COVID-19. Until the science and the medicine is explained to the African-American community very clearly, to Native Americans, also to Mexican Americans, very clearly, people are going to be very, very hesitant. And they should have every right to be hesitant because the vaccine places are the only place on the planet that has sovereign immunity, which means that if you inject your kid with a vaccine and they have a reaction, it could be, and we've done this, Brittany, we talked about Guillain Barre syndrome, we talked about Bell's palsy of the face, mm -hmm. and your person has an adverse reaction to that vaccine, you can't see, you can't sue the, the vaccine company. They have immunity. What business has, if you're going to be injecting people and you have a moral responsibility in a humanitarian uh, situation to treat people fairly, what gives you right not to be sued if your stuff is very, very good? And so these are the questions. And if they have half a million, that's great. But somebody's going to have to articulate for minority people why you should get the vaccine and what the proof is in the medicine and science. And it's not about how Dr. Rowland feels. It's just a reality of basic science and medicine. That is the truth. So folks better ask those questions. Dr. Lane Rowling, you always give us great advice. We appreciate your time.